Hi, this is David Myler, and this is Passing It On with my father, John Myler. Dad, how are we? Good, lad. Good, how are you? No, I'm all right, I'm all right. So obviously we're here with Gillette and all that, and I've been given a series of questions to ask you. So we'll start with the basic one. How would you describe me growing up? Young, energetic, enthusiastic, a bit wild. Um, got into a few scrapes. Um, reasonably good in primary school. Um, with secondary school then, um, we did a good few sessions in Christians where I get a phone call, Mr. Myler, can you come up to the college, please? Um, David has been misbehaving. Um, and you go up and say, what's the story? Well, he threw a bottle. I think you threw a bottle of Coke at a fellow one day. Um, and um, a few days off wouldn't do you any harm. Um, but if you were to play the rugby, then that would be fantastic. So, you know, growing up, um, but... You had a great growing up here in, in Rochestown in Cork because, you know, I was only just looking again today, like out on the green in front of the house, like um, there's a young lad just down the road and he's on his own, Connor's just on his own, whereas you would have had about 10 or 12, you know, mm. Amy, Gavin, all those guys that were there at under six, seven, eight, nine, playing World Cup out in the green every day against guys that were two years older, you know. So um, you had a fantastic... Um, growing up here um and do you think but do you think it's a shame no obviously in modern society though that like as you say i'm very fortunate where we grew up in rochestown uh, probably the the area of grass the green we called it outside the house was probably yeah. i don't know what four pitches in length yeah. obviously no it was based on a hill so you'd only get probably yeah, yeah. a flat surface about 30 yards but we were very fortunate because like there was a couple of lads, Jamie Drennan would be a prime example, he had an older brother, Chris. Um, there was a, a lad, Mark Murphy, Kevin O'Kane, who lived next door. You, uh, Thomas Morley down the road. Colin Buig, who works yeah. with Off the Ball and that. Yeah. That There was actually a group of kind of lads around there that we were able to actually go out and play football. Um, every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the, the beauty of it. It's a, it is such a shame now when you see it that there isn't more... I just, I just feel sorry for that young fella that's out on the green, he's on his own. And then when I just look at you and, you know, as you said to you, there were five um, of your age and then there was five guys, then there were five, six guys that were two years older. And that was the kind of the, you know what I mean? You never had to worry about you um, after school and that because you were always out on the green playing. And, and as you said to me the other day, you know, you went around with a hurley and a slitter in your hand, whereas Gavin was going around with a football. And Jamie was going around with a football, and you don't see that as much today because guys are going around with a with a, um, a smartphone or they're going out around with you know computer games and and they're playing those. Whereas you didn't have you didn't have a smartphone at that stage. You um, were out on the green all the time. You just look out through the window and you were out there. And then you used to come in here for orange and back out again and back oh. in again and back out again. And I sometimes I had to go out and stop the fights and you know what I mean. And um, but it was like World War Three at times out there. You know what I mean. So yeah, but those, that but that's the that, I think that's the the beauty of it as well though because like you're playing like I would have been seven, eight, nine. You're playing against lads who are like 11, 12, and they took no prisoners in a way. Like they weren't leaving a young fella, and you kind of almost learned how to play kind of street football growing up where you'd get knocked around and you get bullied. That yeah, I was the, Yeah, it was the starting point for you going to England. Then, you know, in the way when you went to the 18, you were getting, I'm not saying knocked around, but it, it was competitive out there. And then, you know, because you, you played the hurling and the football, that was hugely important to you in terms of development. Um, and you don't, as I said, you don't see that as much today, guys going around with it. Hardly in the slater than the football, you know. What I mean, just playing with it or hitting it off the wall or whatever. Um, so it's it's um, but you had a good, you had that good, I suppose, development here uh, while you were young, you know. Well, you touched on it there, right? How did you originally feel when I left? Um, obviously at eighteen to go to England, I was. In hindsight, I was very young to leave home and go to another country. It was, never, it was never a problem because if you remember, if you go back to when you were 15, when you were with College Corinthians and you had won doubles all over the place, then in under 11, 12, 13, 14 and that, and the uh, semi-final of a national cup and that. I think when you went to Cove that time, when you were under 15 and within a month, you were midfield on the under 18 team with John Collin. 
I think that was the making of you in a way, and 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 then that kind of year then with Cork City then as well, and you know just playing training with the first team, and and then when you, um, you know went into the full squad, um, I can't think of the name of the manager now. Um, Damien, it would have been Damien Richardson would have been Damien the first Richardson. manager. Yeah, um, but but that kind of prepared you, and and you can see now where a lot of the young lads today are, are you know they're training with their own first teams here in the League of Ireland. And that makes them more ready to go to England when they're 18 or 19. And you know, um, and you were better prepared then to go to England then rather than if you had gone at 15, you know. But like even 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 as I look back on it, um, as most of most people who will watch this won't be aware, but I was in January of sixth year. Um, I had obviously turned professional with Cork City. Um, yeah. I was training full time, the school I was at Bruce College at the time. Um, they were very good to me in terms of I'd be in school from 20 to 9 to 20 to 10. I'd leave school, go training from half 10 to 12 o'clock. Um, I'd be back in school from 2 to 6. I'd leave then and go training at half a 6. But the, like even as I look back on it, like, like I know mum won't want me talking about it, but mum mum didn't want me to go. I do know that mum. My mum it's wanted like, me to I'm miserable two weeks here, I'll tell you that. Yeah, but I know mum didn't want me to go and I know mum didn't want me to drop out of school. Um, but look, I know hindsight's a beautiful thing and I've been very fortunate to go on. But how do you, how, like, even for me, like, like, how did you navigate that? Because it almost... There was no, there was no, there was no problem in, in me navigating that or planning that. You know you know what, exactly what happened when I left you that time, dropped you off uh, yeah. about Helen Sunderland, that... You know, when you get an opportunity like that, and there's a lot of there's a lot of guys go to England, there's a lot of guys go to the club. And and I remember day one saying to you that look, you know, this is your opportunity. This is the first step on the ladder here. And there's a lot of steps to go on the ladder before you actually get there. And we all get opportunities in life, but you have to take them. And you know what I mean? There's there's young lads here now currently on the Cox in the hurling panel, and they're going to get a shot at the Munster Championship in the next few weeks. So you've young Connolly, you've young O'Leary, all of those fellas, they're going to get it to make a name for themselves for the next 10 years to be the next Patrick Horgan, Owen Cadigan. You know what I mean? That's what you get. Um, and I said that to you when I left you that night or morning in Sunderland, like, mm -hmm. you know, there's no well, coming home here and you're not coming home. No, no, look, look, I, I remember it evidently. Um, like it feels like yesterday, it's like we're going back to 2008. Um, that's inevitably when it was. And just the... But like it's 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 actually fascinating to think like it like I do remember mum didn't want me to go. You were more what like did like what you said there. This is a huge opportunity. It's an incredible chance. But it was almost it was almost as if I made my own decision. Um, like I know I was a young adult, but like it is such a risk to go to England at that point. Like you've seen various different scenarios with different players. Like we've often had chats about the times I never played say Ireland 15, 16, 17. Young lads who were, you know, the wonderful players at that age um, went over to Manchester City, Manchester United, and then they ended up back home in two or three years. Yeah. Um, maybe I was very fortunate that I kind of went at that age where I went straight into a good reserve group at Sunderland with a good, you know, yeah, coach in Neil like Daly. If you, if you look at the reserve team, then you would, you Jordan Henderson, you would Colback, Jack Colback, you would Martin Whitehorn, um, you, you, you had your Jamie Chandler, those... Um, you had a really, really good um, reserve team. And I think Sunderland were kind of focusing on that. And Neil Bailey was the manager or the coach manager at the time, you know, who had been with Man United under 18. So you had a very good coach. You had Rob, uh, Roy Keane then as a kind of a, a manager of the club and who was watching your games as well. So, and, you know, you won that reserve league. And I thought that was the, you know, making of you then. And, and I remember then... Um, it was a trip to um, Amsterdam, wasn't there, in, in pre-season in September in 2009, I think. And uh, I had rang Niall Quinn and I said to Niall, I said, David is not training or I don't, I don't know what was happening at the time. And I remember saying to you, are you, are you in the squad or whatever? And, and I said, I don't know. And I rang Niall and I said to him, Niall, Jesus, put him in there. You know, and that was Jordan, yourself, Colback and Waghorn, I think, were the four went into the squad at the time. But... You know, that, that all of those are steps, David, like, and, and 
all of those are steps and and you have to take that opportunity and you took it and 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 you know i take my hat off to you and you know um and that's what we all get in life and that's you know i mean that's the way i look at it and you took that and then there's another step you got into the 22 23 first team squad and Hmm. then you get on the bench then you might get a five minutes and you know you've had a a few hair raising incidences over there you come on against Portsmouth and got sent off after two minutes uh, or a minute Um, you know what I mean then you had to take it on that night in Portsmouth I remember that well and uh, I was waiting for you and and the the Sunderland supporters were coming up they were they were waiting for me as well they were waiting for you Um, but look it's it's every young fella gets an opportunity there I'm involved with the Cock 15 hurlers at the moment you know and we've 80 90 100 players and we're going to leave young fellas out at the moment and they'll develop at 16 and look that, that's that's is that's the way it is and we all take those opportunities in sport and life you know well yeah no like you touched on there right obviously going over to Sunderland how did you feel when you were in the stands watching when I was playing for Ireland Oh, Jesus, David. Um, like this, if if we look back on, right? Like we've obviously sat down. I have 26 caps for my country. I wouldn't change them for anything. But I've been very fortunate that I've actually played, like when I look back on myself, in a lot of iconic games. Yeah. Certainly in my time from 2012, being involved, obviously with the start with Travis Tony till when it kind of yeah. finished up at the back end of 2018, started 2019, sorry, yeah. um, under Martin O'Neill. Um, I didn't play under Mick then, and obviously Stevens come in now. Um, but look, I, I was battling with my own injuries and whatever. But like I, I was very fortunate. Like you look at the Austria game away, um, which is a significant win, the, the one nil. Um, the, German, the two the German, German, the two Germany games I played in. Yeah, yeah. obviously the one Wales. all away. Wales. Yeah, the Wales. But look, I, 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 you take the but like even there, right? Like that that four whatever it was, four or five weeks between Wales. Like, it's 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 the greatest honour of my career that yeah. night. Yeah. Um, but then on the flip side of that, the worst night of my career was four weeks later when we played, you know, Denmark in the second leg of the playoff. Yeah, but Martin got that wrong. Martin got that wrong. Martin got that wrong. Um, yeah, well, sure, look. Because look, I said to mum, I said to mum after five minutes, I said, what's he doing? What's he doing? And mum says, what? He says, what's he doing? He's on the right side of midfield. Like, and I said, no, that's yeah, we not played. Right. Yeah, no. But like Harry, the, the biggest, yeah, the, but the Denmark, if you look at the Denmark um, first leg away when we drew, yeah, um, Harry played as the six. Yeah. Harry played as the whole midfielder. Where I played in the yeah. significant that's games. Because you goal. adapted to Maggot against Wales in the last No, game. no, <laughs> you can't say. <laughs> to be fair, the ball broke, 93rd minute. I've never yeah, scored but, for my country. And yeah. I'm thinking, I'm in here. I mean, and look, I had poured my tank out and I took him yeah, up. Yeah. I took him cleaned out. But I felt, I didn't, look, when you tackle a goalkeeper, it's always going to be a thing. I yeah. didn't think it was malicious tackle. No, it um, wasn't, but... I didn't, you know what? I didn't even know I was on a yellow card. I didn't know. If I'd known, I wouldn't have made the tackle. Yeah. Um, but you either saw, way... You saw glory, I think you saw. I did see, oh, I saw my name in headlines. Uh, I did, I did. But even so, Harry played the six in the in the away leg, in the first the leg. leg. Yeah, but... And he played, no, but he played really well. Um, the yes. team put in. But, but then Harry, what happened was we came back and Martin then, we played a diamond. We played a diamond. Now, I was, my role initially was to go out to the right to help uh, Cyrus with um, the, the winger. No, Sisto. They had the winger Sisto. I yeah. think he played in yeah. Spain at the time. But we should, look, look, you can, it's like any game. We can go back and look at the game and analyse it. Um, go but, through but it. But if you look at the performance that you gave that night in Wales, um, you know, I think you were outstanding in midfield. You know what I mean? I've rarely said that to you, but no, um, you wouldn't. And, and I wouldn't, but no. I would have put you in there. And I said to mum, I said, why is he, what's he doing? He doesn't know what he's doing. And then it was obvious then that Harry was 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 holding and you were on the right side. And that you're not that type of player. I know that. Um but, but but the the question you asked me was about playing for Ireland, and I have to say that was one of the most emotional nights in you know that I've ever in, been involved with as an individual, and then to have you as captain that night was that's the Wales one, yeah, yeah, that that was unbelievable. But 
I thought then like that the John O'Shea's goal in Gelson Kirk oh. against Germany in the 94th minute was, you know what I mean? As I often say there, um, you know, that we were talking to you at one o'clock in the morning, I think, and then driving back to Amsterdam and getting a six o'clock flight in the morning. Then you're flying, floating on air. And then Shane Long's goal against Germany in, mm. in Lansdowne in, in the Aviva Stadium, like was absolutely incredible. But, you know, Playing for your country, you know, I've never played. You, I know you doubt me playing for the Irish universities, but um, ah. well, which is harsh now, David. <laughs> no, but you know, but to put but context I would have in that, I played. I would have loved to. Have played. I played for the All Stars. I, I sorry, I didn't play against the All Stars with Cork, but um, ah, Jesus, you'd love to play for your country. You would die for your country, Jesus. And after watching the video today, Vitali Klitschko about we're Ukrainian and what it means to be from Ukraine and mm. what it means to us as a people, we're proud. We're you know, and, and you're out there and your son is representing and you know I'm friendly with John O'Mani, Peter's dad and yeah. Peter O'Mani's dad and, and I meet him regularly and we'd have chats about our two sons. <laughs> my yeah. son, my son, your son, <laughs> my son, your son. <laughs> your son. Like, John is so proud of Peter then. Yeah. Peter was captain in the last few weeks for Ireland rugby team and yeah, yeah, against look, England. Look, not, look, yeah. look, when you see, when you see your own flesh and blood and whether it's in Crow Park and in an Ireland final or captaining Ireland in soccer, you know, in the European Championship, it's 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 an absolute pride. And then, but then you go back then to 2008 when you started like that. You know what I mean? These are the steps you have to make, and and it's difficult, and 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 it's a pyramid effect where there's only a few make it in the end, like, and that's and that's that's really mm-hmm. like you you go back to those under 15, under 16. Um, trials up in Dublin um, and you were you know you never got a go as under 15 under 16 under 17 and a lot of people would say like you know what am I doing here throwing the towel and all that but you didn't give up and that's what I I admire about you now even still I, I do admire that about you that you kept going and that you just stayed in there and just kept going and going and you loved I've always said that about you to people like that you love playing for Ireland you know you wanted to play and McLean James yeah. McLean wanted to play for her. He loved playing for her. Seamus loved playing for her. And you could see that, you know what I mean, in all those matches. And um, I used to I used to love to. I remember that night you 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 sent me the text um against the USA in Lansdowne Road. And he said, you are captain of Ireland. And he says, Dad, I'm captain. And I turned to mum. I said to mum, he's captain. And mum says, What? What what does that mean? <laughs> You know, and yeah. I just said, he, oh, Jesus, he's captain of Ireland. And I, yeah. I, you know, I mean, as a father, then you kind of say, Jesus, he's made it. Like, do you know what I mean? And that makes all the sacrifices, all the driving, all the, yeah. you know, the pride. And it is, it's, 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 it's not as much about the destination. It's more about the journey of getting there. Yeah. As yeah. you said there, like, I'm very fortunate that, there was particular moments in my career, obviously I'm going back now, but like when I was playing with Corinthians, we were very successful underage. We won everything. We probably went about five seasons unbeaten, yeah. like in Cork. Nobody could come near us. Um, and then obviously the opportunity, you felt it, was, it wasn't it was enough. Um, like that wasn't me. That was you. You made those decisions. Yeah, but there, like, it comes in life, you know, 15, 16, like and I have those on Cork under 15 hurlers. You need to push on now. And Dave, don't forget now, they've come out of COVID. So they've had no real coaching, no real training for, you know, possibly for the best part of two years. Like. Um, mm. And a guy needs to develop at that age. And I think it's, you know, that when you stayed here in Cork, in Ireland, I think that was better for you than going to England at 50. Um, yeah, but I, I, yeah, but I was lucky though, because... I was then training with grown men who yep. like Cove who were 18. I was in around the first team of Cove training with them. Like I was very, very fortunate. Yeah. But like, even as I talk about there, right? Like the decisions you make, when you think back on all the advice you gave me growing up, is there anything you'd alter or change? Not one thing, no. Nothing? No. Do you, what would you say was the best bit of advice you gave me? Your attitude, your character, and don't ever give up. Like I, I the, the the reason I asked that is because I always have one moment. I'll never forget it. I was playing hurling with Black Rock. 
Um, I'd have probably been 14 or 15. I'd have probably been under 15. Yeah. We were training in the back pitch for anyone familiar with Church yeah. Road. And um, it was after school or whatever. And I had one of those days at school where, you know, you can't be bothered. It's like kind of cold. And I was training. And I remember... It was a good few of those days, David, yeah. Yeah. But you came up with that quote that's not only stuck with me, but stuck with a lot of the lads that I played hurling with and Gaelic with growing up, obviously, with Black Rock and Michaels. Um, as you said, like some people come to training and some people come to train. And that was, that was probably the one bit of advice that stuck with me the whole time. And it took me, it did take me a good 18 months, two years for it to actually resonate in my mind, what it actually meant like that. It's no, like there were a lot of lads there who probably didn't in, I'm obviously speaking about hurling at this time, didn't have as much skill and talent as I did. Um, like I, I've no problem saying to anyone, I was 10 times the hurler I was, you know, a football yeah. player. Um, I'd have easily played for Cork. Yeah. Um, I've no doubt in that. Um, You'd have been handy for me in the last few years as a wing forward. Yeah, I would have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'd have helped you in the All Ireland. <laughs> I was even in the crowd. I was Frank, even in the Frank, crowd. Frank said it. Frank actually said that to me before, you know. I was, yeah, but I was, yeah, but hurling came naturally to me. But like, I, 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 in my career, I don't think I've any put more time into like on my own, one on one, on my own Practicing. into yeah. into hurling. The times I used to, you know, but that was probably that what later in life helped me with my work ethic and my desire to become better at a certain skill or attribute. Like obviously, we you mentioned earlier, we live, well, I lived in Roaches Town growing up. But like we'd roast some college down the road. And I remember you used to give me a brand new slitter and say, like, bring it back to me in a few hours. And I used to be down in handball alley, cycle down there, and I used to hit the ball off the wall for hours. Like, um, but, but that was but you have to the snooker player at 15 is doing that. Well, he's probably doing it since he's six or seven. Sarah was doing it when she was swimming. You know, all you you, you go to Johnny Sexton, you go to Peter O'Mani, you go to all of those guys. Why? Because they had a ball in their hand all the time. They were doing it all the time. And it's mm. just repetition, repetition, repetition. And I remember I had Dougie Howlett with, with, with Cork in 2019. And Howlett was a top try scorer for the All Blacks. A really, really great guy. A super guy. And he said that he'd catch 100 balls on the Thursday. Uh, mm. 100 Gary Owens or whatever and then you know he knew that when it came to Saturday then if there was a high ball kick to him he'd be able to catch it because why I've done it and Tiger is the same it's, it's, it's repetition it's memory so it comes into you and you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and that's it that was, that was a great one did you see obviously Tiger when he got back playing there uh, recently he played with his son and that kind of father yeah. son yeah. yeah and they said to his son after like is there any advice your dad has given you and he actually said Tiger's son said, like, the shot is the shot. doesn't matter if you're taking the shot to win, you know, the Masters or you're taking the shot to beat your, your buddy. Yeah. Um, the shot is still the shot. She'll go st step up and hit your shot. It doesn't matter who's watching. And he said it was advice that Tiger had been given off his father years ago. Yeah. And it is the way it's, like, as you said, the repetition, if you practice yeah, something but, enough but times. A lot of people would criticize me today saying I'm old school. Like we, we do ball work with the young lads in a, in a, in a handball alley, in, well, in a big hall. And, and they're in there and they're in two groups and, and they do ball skill. You know what I mean? So that, that's something that has to be done every day with a young fellow with a hurley off the ball off the wall. The same with the football, the same with the rugby ball, the same with swimming. It's just repetition. That's why even, 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 do you know when you look at like, Obviously, I'll watch. I'll watch some bit of hurling now. Um, like you look at, say, Keen Lynch. Like yeah. that's his. That's a gift. That's an art. That's come from probably hurling as a kid, having a hurley on you. Like yeah. I know he was. He's yeah. wonderful at a lot of sports. I believe he played, you know, soccer up to a certain yeah. age. Yeah. Um, but you can but see Huggy, this. Huggy, Huggy never had a. Huggy never had a hurley out of his hand and need a ball and he'd be up in the mm -hmm. den taking freeze and that and. You know, there's no, there's no body can take that away from a guy like Hoggy. He's just, he was just religious at it. He was just practicing. Same with Henry Shefflin, same with Joe Canning, all these guys. Like, they're just there that you, you don't see it. You don't see the three, four hours preparation that they put into that every day. It's not just once a week or, you know, once a fortnight. They do it every day. They, they do it religiously. Um, and it's, it's um, probably don't see it enough today, you know. No, 
obviously I went on to have a footballing career. If I wasn't a footballer, what do you think I would have been? I often say that to your mother, David. I said, please don't ask me that question because um, I'd hate that 32 years of age. If you were here in this house, I'd say we'd have come to blows. I'd say. <laughs> I don't think I know. I think no, I don't, I don't think, know. You, you. I don't think I'd be living at home with you at thirty-two. No, you wouldn't. No, no I think I think I think here. I think me and Mum would kick you out. Well, you'd be gone. Well, the two of us would probably have to leave. I'd say. No, yeah. I, I look. I, I remember I went to one of your parent-teacher meeting when you left Christians and went to Bruce and and uh, Mr. O'Brien, Sean O'Brien was 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 doing the maths with you and uh, and he said to me he's an honors A student. I said. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Mr. O'Brien, I think you have the wrong um, person. Um, I think you need to check your face. No, no, no. He said, he's, he's really good. So I think you'd have probably gone to UCC, um, studied uh, maths there. I think probably ended up teaching in the North Manor, Rochestown College, um, maths um, and something like that. Um, I, I just, uh, I honestly. You don't know. Honestly, we, we, we've actually spoken about it here a few times and um, I could never visualise you here, David. I really couldn't because um, I suppose that's, that's when I left you that morning. I just said, look, you, you have this and make sure you take it because you've had, a, you've had a brilliant life. And I've said to you before umpteen times, I'm, I'm be mad jealous of you in a way that you got paid to play. And some of us that were playing hurling of football, you know what I mean? And we we got nothing. Well, we got fierce enjoyment out of it. We got yeah, I know too. Yeah, I know what you mean though. I know I always I always I always wonder at myself, like well, you got what? set up for life, you know what I mean, with your career. Um, you know, and, and I put in the same amount of time, I probably put in more effort than you. Um, but I have pride. I have enjoyment. That's what I have out of it. But, but you've made your life out of it. You've your family, your you know your house and all that. Everything is, you know what I mean. You're looked after for life. You know. An interesting one I have here, right? Obviously, you've been very successful in your own achievements, like coaching, playing, and what have you. Obviously, then I step into the world of sport and professional sport. How difficult did you find it to go between a coach, because you coach some of my teams, and a father? I was both you. I was both a coach, I was both a father, and I was both a mentor. The, the key difference is when, when you have to separate those two. I coached you a lot in, in terms of underage hurling and underage football. I mentored you through that. And then at times, then when you were acting the maggot or messing a small bit, I had to be your father. I had to be strict, um, you know, and, 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 and like every father, every parent has always problems with their child. And then it's just to kind of advise you on which path or which correct way to go. And then to leave that aside then, because we might be training then that evening then for hurling or football or soccer or whatever. And then I, I had to, I had to be the coach then. So it's 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 not to be diving in. It's not to be living, you know, my life through you. I've never done that. I've no. always said to you, it's 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 your life. It's not my life. But I will advise you because, you know, when I look back at my own career, like like mum and dad were home in Wexford, and you know, I was in Garmistown in Dublin. You kind of have to make your own decisions. And then when I went to the bars and that, so we need a mentor there and. You know, in my academic career as a lecturer for the last 30 years, I would strongly advise everybody, every player has to have a mentor. Everybody has to have somebody that guides them through rough patches. So you're mentoring. But I have to be a father as well. And even still, I'm a father to you and, and I'm a grandfather to your two kids in that. So I'd advise you. And then this is what I'm the, the, the advice, the expert opinion or whatever I'm trying to give you. But but then when you were on the team, and I'd say ninety nine percent of the time you listened to me. I don't think you ever. I don't think we ever had. No, that. no. I I I definitely think I would have. Um, I would say probably a hundred percent of the time. Um, just because I always felt that you were never trying to live it through. I never me. wanted. No, oh, yeah. No, you gave like we often we joke. No, um, like. 
we look at different examples of different, you know, young boys and girls who are like, you opened the door, but I had to walk through it. Yes. And you opened doors for me and you helped guide me to which door, but I had to go through the door. I was never pushed through the door. Um, that was always I, I, got, I got most of them right. Yeah. No, I got I'll one wrong. And well, I, I, well, I got <laughs> one wrong. Well, yeah. I think, well, well, we won't go down that road. We've, we, no, that was I'm a not, joint decision. So I can't, that was yeah, a joint decision. Yeah, but it was and, more my fault than you, but. Nah, I, but, no, mm. I won't, I won't leave you take responsibility no. for that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, but do you remember, do you remember, no, it's just, it's, here's an interesting one because it's very important because it, it, it just, you, you know, you have these flashbacks when you kind of get talking. There was a, a great one. Um, as you highlighted, I did get in a bit of trouble in school one stage. Um, so I was given a couple of days off to relax and put my feet up. Yeah. But if you remember, um, you weren't happy with me because I think this was the second occasion that it happened and I was grounded, which is a term I haven't, I haven't oh, said Jesus. in a long time. Yeah, yeah. But I actually, I had just signed with Cove Ramblers. So it'd have been yeah. under 15, yeah. uh, yeah. it would have been 15. Yeah. I'd probably have been in second or third year in, in Christians. Um, and I'll never forget it. Um, you said to me, you're not to leave the house all weekend. Yeah. And that's it. You cannot yeah. leave the house. Um, yeah. I remember I had a list of jobs to do around the house. I remember I did my jobs, but it came to the Saturday morning. Yeah. And yeah. obviously I had a game with Cove. Yeah. Obviously living in Rochester. And I'll never forget it. Um, you had said, by no means are you to leave the house. And yeah. I remember I was there thinking, I was like, oh, well, I can't, I can't miss the game. Yeah. And I suppose this is probably the, the, the giddiness, the hyperness, the bit of devil in me as a, as a young teenager. Um, but I remember I went to the game. I remember I walked, I think it was seven miles. Would that be right? Seven miles to the ferry? Uh, so seven, about seven kilometers, yeah, down to the boat. Seven kilometers, ferry. okay. Yeah. So you get a little ferry, which is only... I'll be saying 500 yards, yeah, into Cove. And I remember I had to walk up to the stadium. Um, I ended up getting collected halfway. So I remember we were meeting at 10 o'clock and I left the house at 8. I'm going to say you were probably manager of Wexford then. Probably. Might, would have been... No, no, no. You know, it was, Wexford was 07, 08, just probably... Um, we'd just, be looking at 04, 03, 04. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, I remember I went to the game, I went to the game and whatever, I think, we, I think we won three, two, I scored three goals. I remember I scored all the goals in the game anyway, and I managed to get home before you got home. And I said nothing and you said nothing to me because you were annoyed with me and rightly so. Um, and then it was Barry Pilo or it might've been, um, what's Noel? Right yeah. yeah, Barry Pilo or Noel. Um, and they watch a... Good. Yeah, no plan. And they put they put the thing like Myler Hattrick wins game or something like that in the back page. And I remember, I never forget it. And this is the truth. No, for anyone's watching this, you bollocked me for that. Yeah. And I'd say now I'm 32 now, and I would say two and a half years ago, just before COVID, maybe six months before COVID, was the first time since yes. then we'd spoken about it. And you said, Do you know what? Fair play to you. Took balls to do what you did. Do you I, remember? I, I cried on my own. Um, and I told you I was sorry. Um, but I admired you. You had balls to do that. Um, I know. I, and I tell you that. I admired you for that. And I, yeah, but I it, took, it, took, it took you 15 years to tell me that. 15 you know, years. I come from my father would never have. I was brought up that way. That, do you know what I mean? You didn't dish out compliments do you know what I mean but I admire I I, I, I said that to you I don't know what two and a half years ago I apologized yeah. and said look I'm sorry but I I really admire that and I think that was that was a you know a kind of a, a great statement uh, and it just showed you the character that you had like that you know um the attitude and I admire that and uh, yeah, you know, because I remember had, you've, you've had those you've had those kind of days in England where I told you when you got sent off against Portsmouth, you're gonna have to take a shit here. You're just gonna have to take it and mm. suck it up. And you know, you've a game Wednesday night and it'll be gone by Wednesday night or Saturday, but try and get through the weekend or whatever it is. Um but that but you, so, even even as you bring that up, do you remember right after the Portsmouth game? I got a straight red, so I think I got two games. Yeah. And then uh 
was it did we play Man City or Tottenham? And I went straight back into the team. Yeah, Tottenham, the three one match up and yeah, we won three one yeah. and like it was always forgiven, obviously beating Tottenham three one. Yeah. A wonderful team, but and you know about that night then. Which night? Nice. Remember you said that night after the Tottenham match you take us out and then we went to Hannah Hannah's in Newcastle and uh, we couldn't get a table, do you remember? Yeah. We couldn't I do, yeah, me. Back. We had to go back to Sunderland and then in a month's time you took us, you took yeah. and then me up to Anna Hannes and, and it was all Mr. Myler David Hawaii. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? So in one month... Like, I established myself as the first team player. You established yeah. yourself into a prime table in Hannah Hannes, like, you know what I mean? But oh. you know, I, I look... Look, look, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I told you two years ago, I was sorry, but, uh, no, but that was, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was no, didn't do you any harm. <laughs> no, no. But this, that was the thing. It was kind of like, in my mindset at the time was, well, I've got a responsibility here to my team and I, I want to go and play the game. And like, don't get me wrong. I knew I'd messed up. I'd been in trouble in school. But, but that's. Yeah, for messing. That's the father side as well. Do you know, like, look, you were acting the maggot at that stage at, for, mm. for for a time, and sometimes then you have to put the boot in and 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 control, uh, and that's the father figure. But then, as the coach, then you're saying that was brilliant. Do you know, yeah. as as the coach, then say that's brilliant. Well, do you know what I mean? That and I, I've I've always felt then that if there were those problems came up in England when you were in England on your own and and you had a good few of them, do you know what I mean? I often rang Brian Henderson. I say, Brian, would you ever go down and check him out and call down to the house and see how he is? You know what I mean? Because I oh, have yeah, Brian would knock on the door and I'd send, "Boy, I'm I'm all right, Brian." Don't yeah, but, ring. Uh, but 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 you know as well as I do that there were tough times then. You know what I mean? When you're a young fellow of 18 or 19, you're in England, you're on your own. There's nobody going to help you. There's nobody going to open doors for you. You know mm. what I mean? So, um, and and um, look, you were fine. It didn't do you any harm. No, it didn't. 